Welcome back class, I'm Mr. Teacher with the SAT Math Video Guide, and we left off last time on number 5 of section 2 test number 5, so we're gonna start on number 6, so if Y is the midpoint of line XC, XZ, which of the following must be true? Then they give us three options, either YZ is equal to half XZ, to, or half xz is equal to 2xy, or 2xy is equal to xz. Now we know either 2 or 3 has to be wrong, because xz cannot, well, because half xz equals to 2xy over here, and then xz equals to 2xy over here. So one of them has to be wrong, but we're not sure about number one. So let's first draw this line xz, which will go like this. This is x, this is z, and y is the midpoint of this line. So this is equal to this. This. Something. <laughs> so let's look at the first condition. yz has, is equal to half of xz. Well, how much is yz? yz is this much. And it's most definitely half of xz because this is equal to this half of the line. So we know this one is, well, hold on. We know, therefore, this one is correct. Let's look at property two. Half of xz equals to two of xy. So let's pick half of xz. Let's pick the other half this time. So half of xz apparently equals to two xy, but half of xz equals to xy or to yz, depending on which one you're doing. So we know that this one is wrong. Now let's look at number three. Then that this one must must be, well, must have a chance of being correct. So 2xy is equal to xz. So 2xy, one length and two length, because both of them are equal, is equal to xz. And that is true. We covered the entire line. So this is correct. Since these two are correct, our answer choice would be E. Moving on to number seven, which is on the next page, so give me a sec. Yeah, now the logo is suddenly going to be on the top. It's okay, number seven, okay, if 2R is equal to 5S and 5S is equal to 6T, what is r equal in terms of t? So, 2r, wait, no, st? No, 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 6t, that's what it was. Okay, so in this case, if 2r equals to 5s, and 5s equals to 6t, then 2r is equal to 6t. Therefore, r is equal to 6t divided by 2, which is equal to r being equal to 3t, and that is choice c. So basically what we did is that we assumed if 5s is equal to both of them, then both of them are equal to each other. So basically you can now cancel this link out and scribble all over it and also get rid of one of the equal signs because mathematically you don't keep one there like that. <laughs> and oh, da, 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 da. Okay, alright, number 8 is a total of k passengers went on a bus trip. Each of the N buses that were used to transport the passengers could seat a max maximum of X passengers. If one bus had three empty speeds, seats and the remaining buses were filled, which of the following expresses the relationship between N, X, and K? So, let's think about this. They have N buses. N buses. They have k number of passengers and each bus has x seats now each bus was filled up except for one which had three seats empty so n minus one <coughs> oh excuse me um n minus one is the number of buses that were completely full. That minus one bus had three empty seats. So think of it like this. The total number of passengers 
that can be accommodated by the number of buses is n times x, as that's the number of buses times the number of seats, which is the total possible number of people who could come. But now, in one of the buses, three seats were empty. Now, we don't need to calculate how many buses there were to know this. We can just subtract three, since this is the possible possible numbers of people that can be there, maximum possible. So if you just subtract three, you can count that as one bus or three buses if you really want to. But f for the sake of getting this problem correct, we're going to assume that we're just subtracting from one bus. Therefore, this will be equal to k, which is the total number of passengers. And I see that equation in choice A. Number nine is a drawing, so let me get right to that. L and M. I'm just guessing, are they really L and M? Yeah, they are really L and M. So I guess the li parallel lines L and M appear a bit too much in the SAT. Okay, this is K. This is X degrees. Okay. And there's another line going down like this. Sort of. This is 50. This is 80. Okay. So, in the figure above, line L is parallel to line M. What is the value of X? So, if line L is parallel to line M, Hopefully you remember your corresponding angles is that this angle will be equal to this angle and this angle will be equal to this angle. So in that case, this 80, oops, this 80 right here is equal to both of these angles. And we already, already know one, 50. So another one will be 30. Now 30 is the opposite angle of this angle right here, so this one this must also equal to 30. And now 30 plus what would equal 180 degrees because line M is a straight line. And in that case, X will be equal to 150 degrees. I didn't even write the number here. I was too engrossed. Engrossed with right drawing my picture but the correct answer is then choice a 150 degrees number 10 the weird yellow that kind of disturbs my eyes 3x squared is less than 3x whole squared so for what value of x is the statement above false all right so since there are squares here the first thing i would advise you to do is try the zero answer because you know squares and zeros generally don't go together that well so let's try it out right now choice b which is zero in that case three x is equal to zero zero squared is zero zero times three is also zero 0 is less than 0 times 3, which is 0, 0 to the power of 2, which is also equal to 0, so that is false. And we have our correct answer. So instead of just skipping over, let me show you what would have happened if we picked, uh, say, minus 3. If we pick minus 3, then 3 times minus 3 squared, which is 3 times 9, which is 27, would be less than... 3 times minus 3, which is minus 9 squared, which is 81. So it's true. So, all, and if we try number 1, let me just do another one before I go over. 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3, which should be less than 1 times 3 is 3 to the power of 2, which is 9. So this equation is true for every value, negative or positive, except for 0. And so, choice B is the correct answer. Um, I think I can do number 11 right here. This was a short problem. Ugh, that's a, uh, I don't like that color. Number 11. Senai customized her bicycle by exchanging the front wheel for a wheel that had one half of the, the diameter of the back wheel. 
Now, when Sinai rides the bicycle, how many revolutions does the first wheel make for each revolution of the back wheel? Okay, so let's draw these wheels. I don't know why she would want to change her front wheel to a wheel half its size, but she wanted to, so we're not going to ask her about it. Okay, so if, if it was one that had half the diameter, let's say... The radius of this was 10, so the diameter is 20. The radius of this would be 5. So how many spins does it take the front wheel to get one full revol revolution on the back wheel? Let's just take one full revolution of the back wheel as an example. So now we let's find the circumference of each uh, circle so circumference is 2 pi r or pi diameter but we have the radius now so 2 pi r it is this is 10 pi and this is 20 pi so this is clearly half of this so this would have to spin twice since it has a 10 pi circumference to travel a distance of 20 pi which means that in one revolution of the back wheel, the front wheel would have to travel two times all the way around. And that is choice C, which is the correct answer. Because the front wheel can't travel 15 pi meters, let's say, and the back wheel travels 20 pi. That would mean that you've already broken your bicycle and you're just sitting in a mess over here with your bike just... Yes. <laughs> so, I think um, I'm gonna stop right here for now. If I hope this helped you with your SAT preparation. Um, I hope you enjoyed my little comic here, which didn't work out that well. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.